Derek, I have talked a lot about playing with you for three years, and you were the most confident player that I had ever played with during my big league career. Was that there all the way back in high school, or did it just get better and bigger as you had more success? Well, it was there when I was younger. Uh, it was broken when I first started my career because I struggled quite a bit in the minor leagues. But then uh, I was able to overcome that through a great support group and having a little bit of success. And then, you know, once you, you taste a little bit of success, I was able to always draw on that. So, I, you know, I, I understood that this was a game of failure. You're going to fail more than you succeed. But every time I was in situations, I thought I was going to be successful, and I, I believed that. And, and I think uh, the mental side of the game is much more important than the physical part. Derek, if I asked you to complete this sentence, I would not have been elected to the Hall of Fame if I hadn't prepared myself to do these things. What are some of those things on that list that were so important to you throughout your career? Uh, prepare. You know, I prided myself on being prepared. Uh, one of, you know, the thing that makes me most uncomfortable in life, life is being unprepared. You hear athletes talk about the game slowing down. I think it slows down when you're prepared. And when you're caught off guard, that's when things tend to speed up. So uh, obviously you have to work hard. You have to be accountable. You have to have the opportunity. Look, I was given a great opportunity by the Yankees, by the Steinbrenner family, uh, to not only start my career in New York, but to play my entire career in New York. But, uh, you know, I, I prided myself on being prepared. You know, Derek, you mentioned going back to your early days, you had those 56 errors in Greensboro, but the guy who drafted you or scouted you and uh, signed you, Dick Roach, said you handled failure well. Can you remember that time and sort of tell us how you turned that failure into success? Well, I think I, I, I hid... I was pretty good at disguising failure <laughs> than other people. I mean, it's tough to deal with that. You know, it's, it's tough to deal with at, at any level, let alone when you start your professional career and you already have questions on whether or not you, you can compete at that level. Then you get to the major league level and you have, you have periods where you're going to struggle um, and you have to get over that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you have to learn to deal with. Um, it, it can be difficult at times to deal with it. But you always have to draw on the, the previous success that you had in the past. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of confidence when I went about my business. And, and I did that because I felt, like I said before, that I worked harder than everyone else and I was prepared. You know, Derek, when you're a player and you come to the New York Yankees, you realize you're playing in front of the greatest fans in the game. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship with the Yankee fans. And if you really, if you have anything to say to those fans now that you're a Hall of Famer. Man, first of all, I've been very vocal about, uh, I agree with you 100% that, that uh, Yankee fans are the greatest fans in the world. I grew up with them. And, uh, you know, ever since I was 20 years old, I was, I was in the spotlight in New York. And, and uh, they all grew old with me. Uh, and one thing with the Yankee fans is, is they watch every game. They're into every game. They're very knowledgeable. And uh, they respect you if you're accountable. They respect you if you show up and, and you go to work every day. And I tried to be consistent. And I wanted my teammates, I wanted the organization, and I wanted the fan base to be able to count on me. So um, I appreciate how they pushed me. They pushed me for 20 years, and, and still, everywhere I go, I run into Yankee fans. And, and uh, it's a good feeling when you have those conversations with them. Derek, we all know the stories about how you dreamed of becoming a Yankee as a young boy. Once that happens and you begin to have the career that you had, when does the dream extend to the level that you say, I might be having a Hall of Fame career. That might be part of the dream, too. Yeah, that, that is probably about uh, two hours ago when I found out. I mean, it's not really something that, that you think about. I, I tried not to think about it. My One thing that my family always tried to tell me was to enjoy the journey, and I had a difficult time doing that because it was always, I was always focused on what's next and and uh you know my career ended five years ago and uh it really i can't change what i did um and uh you know everyone always wanted to talk about the hall of fame or the potential to go to the hall of fame and i sort of shushed them right when they brought it up so now it feels good that I'm able to say that I was elected, and, and now we can talk about it. One of the remarkable things, too, Derek, about your resume is the fact that your numbers in the postseason, and you played a lot of postseason games, are so remarkably similar to what you did in the regular season. And again, does that go back to that preparedness? Because Flash has already talked about it, that some players get in those big moments. They feel the pressure. They don't handle them well, but you did. How were you able to do that? 
I treated every game like it was the same. Whether it was the first game of spring training or game seven of the World Series, I looked at it as it was a baseball game. And, um, you know, you, you prepare for it, you have confidence, but, uh, I, you know, I never went through a regular season game saying, oh, it's just a regular season game. And then you get to the postseason, and all of a sudden now you have to try harder, so to speak. So I treated every game the same. I had fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, but I enjoyed the big moments. I mean, you have to enjoy when the spotlight's on. And, uh, you know, I just always envisioned myself having success. Having said that, I failed quite a bit. 